don't create your Power BI report design in Power BI itself. Meaning the background, the chart placeholders, the icons, the images, the extra shapes, all of that extra design stuff that creates a better user experience. Don't create it in Power BI. Instead of that, use a different tool like Figma, PowerPoint, or Adobe Illustrator. Now that is what most Power BI report developers will tell you, but is that actually the best advice? And why do most Power BI report developers tell you that in the first place? Let's have a look. When we create a Power BI report, we have of course the main visualizations and the slices that let us slice and dice the data, but not only, there are also other elements that you add to a page. Think of little icons that you want to have there, or maybe images or background shapes that can create a better user experience and a better design overall. Now, the question is, should you make use of shapes and images that Power BI lets you add to a page, or should you build one image background in a different tool like PowerPoint or Figma or Adobe Illustrator, and then export it as one image and use that as a background for your report? Now, if you're not sure what I mean, let's go over here to an example. Now, this report page uses a background pic a picture that has already the placeholders for the chart and those little icons that you see on the left-hand side. Now, if I go here to the formatting options, canvas background, you see over here, there's an image. Now, if I would remove that image, then it doesn't look so good anymore, right? Yeah, because all of these shapes that you saw in the background, well, they were part of just one image. Now, is that actually better? Or should you make use of the shape that you see here on the insert? And also here we have the possibility to add separate images. Wouldn't that be easier? Because then you can control every single object. Now, the first main reason that people will tell you why you should have just one background image is that, well, it loads much faster. Because if you have a lot of design elements, all of these design elements need to be loaded separately, and that can take a lot of time. Now, is that actually true? Now, to test this, I've created a new page over here with just one new card visual. All right. Now, what we're going to do is add separate shapes, then separate images, and see what it does to the loading time. Now, to test what the loading time is, we need the performance analyzer, which you can open up by going here to the right hand side, click on the little plus icon, and then here we need the performance analyzer. Okay, now you can also go here to the top, view, and also there we have performance analyzer. Now, if you wanna go to the performance analyzer pane, we just click here on performance analyzer and it opens up. And now we can start recording. So let's click on start recording, refresh the visuals. So we have a total loading time of 337 milliseconds. Now that time gets divided up further into separate components that you see when you click on the plus icon. Now we have a DAX query, which took 89 milliseconds to run, which is basically the query that gets sent from the visual to analysis services to fetch the summarized data points that need to be visualized, which is the second component, visual display to nicely visualize these data points in the chosen visual. Well, that happens there. Visual display, 33 milliseconds. And then we have other. Other is the other background processes and the waiting time, and that was 215 milliseconds. Now, the parts that you can influence are the DAX query and the visual display. For example, if you have less data points to visualize, the visual display will probably be a little bit quicker. Or if you have a custom visual, probably will take a little bit longer. Now, the DAX query, well, if you have fast DAX measures, if you find the most optimal way of writing your DAX measure, then you can bring this down. All right. Now, here, the exercise that we're going to do is, let's see what the impact is of other objects that we place on this report page. Now let's start by adding some chart placeholders, which we can do by going to insert. And then here we have all different kinds of shapes that we can choose from. So you can go for a normal rectangle or I hear a rounded rectangle. And let's say we're going to have some more charts here at the bottom. All right. So over here, we don't have to be exact. So this is what we'll do. Now then we can copy paste this shape. So control C, control V and create some more placeholders. Now, if you want to get rid of these rounded corners, then just select your images, go to formatting, and here in the shape and style, we can put the rounded corners a little bit down. Okay, now, let me also create one more here on the left-hand side, and there you go. Now, 
here on this placeholders, we could add some other visualizations later. And of course, I would also play around with the uh, with the color. But for now, I leave the color as it is, so that's clear that we uh, which elements we have on this page. All right, so now we can rerun the performance analyzer again. So I'm going to open it up and then refresh the visuals. I see now we have 280 milliseconds, which is actually lower than what we had before. Hmm. Now, these timings, they can vary quite a bit, depending on what else is going on on your computer. So therefore, I'm just switching back to that previous page again, where we did not have any of these shapes. And over here, I'm going to refresh the visuals again. You see we have 240. Let's refresh it again, and again, and again. All right, so you see, sometimes it uh, peaks a little bit because something else is going on your laptop. But here you see most of the times are around 240, 242. Uh, there we have 213 versus the 280 that we have for that new page with the objects. OK, now also here again, we can do it a few times. And you see here is around 290. All right, so it's went up. A little bit, a few milliseconds, not very noticeable for the end user yet, because it's just three simple shapes that are native to Power BI. But what if we keep on going like this? What if we also add maybe an image, a logo there in the top right corner and some extra shapes on the left hand side? Let's do that as well. So I'm going to go here to insert image. And you see, I have here the Amazon logo that I'm going to open up. And that one, let's make it a little bit smaller and put it in there top right corner, and here on the left hand side, I'm going to add some icons. There you go. Now we have to refresh the visuals again, and let's see the new results. Now, we have more objects than before, and you see, uh, again, it went up quite a bit. Huh? So we have 647 milliseconds, but we cannot be 100% sure if uh, this is completely correct. So let's refresh the visuals a few times, and you see it hovers somewhere between 550 and 650 milliseconds, which is again, more than before, all right? Now you see every time when we add an object, that other part is going up. And that is because it is a single thread of the UI and operations happen um, sequentially. So one after the other. And the waiting time increases when we have more objects that themselves also take quite a bit to load, all right? Now let's keep on going. Let's now also add text boxes and maybe another image, a pretty image that is a little bit bigger in size. So you see, we have some extra text boxes, placeholders, and also here an image. Now, not that it's really pretty at the moment, but that is not the point. It's just that we have some more objects to see, evaluate what happens to the loading time. So again, performance analyzer, refresh the visuals. And now this time we have 642 milliseconds, quite similar to before. Let's refresh again, and 686, and one second. So you see clearly the uh, milliseconds, the rendering time is going up, up, and up, the more objects that we are adding. Now the question is, where does it stop? Do you have a very complex design with a lot of li little icons and images that are very big in size uh, that you didn't compress? Now here we still have a relatively simple design, but it already has a noticeable impact from where we started off with, something around 300 milliseconds. Now 300 milliseconds, you might think, oh, 300 milliseconds, the user is not going to notice. But the more complex that your design gets, well, this could easily go up to one second or maybe two seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group all of these elements together and then make them much smaller and then place them right next to one another, like this. So here we basically just have all of these other objects three times. Now, what I'm going to do is, again, clear the performance analyzer, refresh the visuals, and this time the loading time already went up to 2.4 seconds. Now, if I open that card over there, you see not so much happened there with the DAX query and the visual display, but the waiting time, the other, went up significantly. So I guess by now you get the point. The more objects that you have, the longer the loading time. Now, what is then the alternative? The alternative would be to go to PowerPoint, Figma, Adobe Illustrator, and build your backgrounds there. Now, let me give you an example. So in software programs like Adobe Illustrator, we have 
many more options, but it doesn't have to be Adobe Illustrator or Figma. It can also be something much more simple like PowerPoint. Now that background from before could also easily be created in PowerPoint, right? So let's take the one uh, that you saw at the beginning, just with a different gradient applied. And this we can export as image and then import into Power BI, right? So let's do exactly that. And over here, I'm back in Power BI. You see, I left the visual itself, but also the title and over here, subtitle, which might change quite a bit. And I don't want to recreate that background over and over again. And so therefore, I still insert those as separate objects. And here for the logo, also separate because I don't want to lose any quality there. All right. So let's now go to the canvas background and the formatting options and choose the exported image from either Adobe, Figma, or PowerPoint. Now, there you go. Now, it doesn't look good just yet because I have to set the image fit to fit. And now we have all of these extra objects like the placeholders for the charts, the menu there on the left-hand side in the background image. And now the interesting part is, what is the loading time right now? for this page and all of the visuals and objects that are on it. Now, to test that, again, we go to Performance Analyzer. Let's clear it and hit Refresh. Now, this time we have 337 milliseconds. Hmm, not that much, but again, uh, we have to do it a few times. So this time, hmm, a bit higher, 692. Let's click again and again and again. So you see, most of the times it's around 300 37 milliseconds. Now that is a huge difference, especially compared to the most extreme scenario where we had a lot of objects and almost a loading time of two seconds. Now that 330 milliseconds is almost the same as what we started off with when we only had the visual and nothing and none of the other objects, right? And that's why most Power BI report developers tell you it's a good idea uh, to go for a background that has all of these elements already integrated. Now, of course, you have to watch out that that image that uses background is not super big itself. Now, in this case, it's just 9 KB. If this would have been a PNG, it would be a 31 KB. So, and not much loading there of, uh, of the background. Now, this is just part of the story though, because if you just rely on the features in Power BI, you will also see hmm, there are not that many shapes to choose from that you can use for your design. And what you can do to these shapes is also limited. You cannot uh, apply gradients or uh, have some special shadow effects uh, that you can apply. No, not possible. And in other tools like PowerPoint, Figma, and Adobe Illustrator, you can do all of these things. And you can do these things much quicker, much more easily. So that is another reason why a lot of Power BI developers would tell you, create your backgrounds, your design outside of Power BI export an image and use that uh, for your reports. All right, now there's another consideration though, and that is maybe you don't need a fancy design and you don't care about a few hundred milliseconds of loading time. Well then, maybe it's just better to work with the shapes and images in Power BI, right? And just for your prototyping or for your internal use uh, where you don't care so much about the design anyways, right? Then it's much easier to make changes over here in Power BI without having to go to these other tools. Now, that would be a good reason why you don't want to go and use one of these other tools. Now, let me know your thoughts and what do you do for your reports? And if you want to know how to create some of these designs in, for example, PowerPoint, then check out these videos. And if you want to build reports from beginning to end with me, learn all of my tips and tricks around design, then check out my upcoming training over here. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.